Hello everyone. Welcome to the 12th lecture of the course Statistical Thermodynamics. The topic of this lecture is the definition of entropy. In the previous lectures, we have learned that every object or every system has an entropy and we have learned how to calculate the change in entropy when the system goes from one equilibrium state to another. We have also learned that the change in entropy of the system and its surroundings considered together is either zero or positive when the system undergoes a change. Although we know how to calculate the change in entropy, we have not really defined entropy so far. The reason is that it is not possible to define entropy by using the classical picture of thermodynamics. The microscopic view of matter is necessary to define entropy. Even historically, Clausius, who introduced the concept of entropy as a new state function and gave the second law of thermodynamics, was not able to define entropy or provide a physical understanding of this property. This understanding was given by Boltzmann by taking a microscopic perspective of a macroscopic system. So entropy is certainly a property of a macroscopic system, but its definition requires that the system be considered microscopic. The key idea is that entropy is a measure of the number of options that a system in equilibrium has microscopically. That is, it is a measure of the number of ways in which the internal energy of the system can be distributed among its atoms. Each microscopic way or option is called a micro state. So we could say that more the micro states of a system, more its entropy. We might guess that entropy is proportional to the number of micro states. So entropy proportional to W, where W is the number of micro states. However, we quickly realize that a little modification is required in this relation. If a system is doubled in size, its entropy, which is a property like mass or energy, must double. But what about the number of options or microstates? If the number of ways to distribute energy or the number of options in a single unit of material is n, like this, then if we have two units, the number of options to distribute the energy is n times n. This will be even more clear when we review some basic concepts in probability. Anyway, the point is that the doubled system has a squared number of options but double the entropy. This can be reconciled if entropy is proportional to ln of the number of ways to distribute energy. W is n for one unit and W is n squared for two units. 
and then we can see that the entropy for two units is twice the entropy for one unit. This equation is essentially Boltzmann's famous equation S is equal to K ln W which provides a definition of entropy. Let us now consider the microscopic picture of the second law of thermodynamics. For an isolated system, that is a system where energy is conserved, the system undergoes changes from its original equilibrium state to go to a new equilibrium state when there are more options available for the energy to be distributed in the new state. Let us represent the initial state by a box like this here and let us call this state I and the number of ways to distribute energy in this state is let's say Ni. And let's consider another state represented by this box which we call state final or state F and let's say the number of ways to distribute energy is NF. Let's say that NF is greater than NI. Then this is the direction of change of the system. A system moves spontaneously to a state where there are more options available for its energy to be distributed. Or a system moves to a state where its energy is more distributed rather than being clumped up. Spreading out happens spontaneously because if there are more options available, there is nothing stopping a system from taking them. Nature always prefers more options rather than less options, all else being same. The reverse process of moving to an equilibrium state with less options is not spontaneous because this requires that the atoms of the system coordinate together to move in a way such that the final state has lesser options for the energy to be distributed. This coordinated motion can happen if work is supplied to the system, but it cannot happen spontaneously. At least, the probability of it happening is very, very small. We will get a feel for how small this probability is in the upcoming lectures. For a given macro state of the system, that is, for a particular thermodynamic state of the system, there are several microstates. The microstates are changing constantly, although their statistical properties like their number and the nature of their distribution does not change when the system is in thermodynamic equilibrium. Microstates are characterized by their wave function, which is a function of all the positions of the particles of the system, or if we are describing the particles classically, by the position and momenta of every particle of the system. Note that, strictly speaking, for the quantum treatment, the variables x1, x2 and so on are the combined spatial and spin variables of the particles. Macro states, on the other hand, are characterized by variables like number of particles, volume and temperature.
or number of particles, pressure and temperature or N entropy and volume or number of particles, entropy and pressure. As we have discussed before, statistical thermodynamics bridges these two words. The goal of statistical thermodynamics is to understand the statistical properties of the microstates, the different types of distributions and the relative probability of the different distributions. I know I have not really defined the concept of a distribution and I need to do that. So to fully appreciate the idea of entropy and the second law of thermodynamics, we need to study some basic ideas of probability which we will do in the next lecture. Before closing this lecture, let me draw your attention to an important point. Many of you have learned somehow that entropy is disorder. This statement is at best partially correct and at worst an undesired propagator of misunderstanding. The disorder in the context of entropy has a very specific meaning and that has to be first correctly understood. Moreover, even if we understand the meaning of disorder correctly, the statement that entropy is disorder is not always correct. Let me address these two points separately. First, the meaning of disorder in the context of entropy. Consider a picture here of two equilibrium states which are two different arrangements of my little daughter's crayons. Which one is more disordered? You don't need to be a science student to answer this. Anybody will say that the one on the right, where the objects are more randomly placed, is more disordered. Does that mean that the equilibrium state on the right has more entropy? Well, no. Each of these two equilibrium states have exactly one arrangement or one way in which the objects are placed. The objects do not move and remain where they are forever unless there is an intervention from outside. There are no other arrangements accessible to the system without external intervention. So there is no reason to think that one state has more microstates than the other and therefore there is no reason to conclude that the disordered arrangement has more entropy than the ordered one. The main point is that one cannot talk about order or disorder in the context of entropy if the system cannot on its own access other arrangements besides the one it is in currently. Now coming to the second point. In nature, often an increase in entropy manifests in increased disorder of atoms. For example, air escapes from the tire of a bicycle and sugar in a glass of water dissolves spontaneously. But equating increased disorder in the arrangement of atoms with increasing entropy is not always true. In this context, I urge you to watch the beautiful lecture by Professor Sharon Glotzer, which is available on YouTube, from which I am showing you a very telling screenshot. Please watch this lecture, which explains with some beautiful animations why entropy is not always disorder. In the next lecture, we will discuss some ideas of probability necessary to define and calculate entropy. See you for that.